Good morning and welcome to Woodward's Watercolours headquarters. Bonnie is here with me this morning. It's our wonderful studio day. And this morning what I want to look at with you is the basics of watercolour. We're going to have a quick look at the difference between using watercolour paint from a tube, watercolour paint from a half pan, how to create a half pan from watercolour paint that found in the tube. We're going to look at the simplicity of lifting water, about the consistency that we're looking for and exploring simple things like how we can create actually a Jane's grey from a more earthy black and how we can go back to getting an earthy black from a more blue Jane's Payne's grey. So come with me this morning as we look at the basics of watercolour and I hope that whether you're an expert, whether you're quite experienced at painting or whether you're just a beginner, that in sharing how I do it, you might have your practice that more informed and enriched. So from Bonnie and I, let's come and paint together. So I want to go through some different options that you have and some different formats that watercolour comes in. The most common, and these are uh, one of my favourites along with the Windsor & Newton, are the Daniel Smith half pans. Come in the great tin, comes with a great little colour card, and these are the half pans. I find these the most effective uh, way to use watercolour. The next option that we have is watercolour in a tube. Now, watercolour in a tube, I'm not so much a fan of. In the class that I take and what I'm teaching watercolour, I recommend that people don't use these, but there is a way that you can use them. Now, this is just how I do it, but there is a way that you can use them. I recommend that you use these, the watercolour half pans. Okay, the next way that you can find watercolour or that I have found watercolour are watercolour pencils. These are the Derwent Intense watercolour pencils and I've demoed um, on the channel using them. I think they're fantastic. They're full of pigment. So this is the next option. And then the final one that I have, I know that there are others, but the final one that I have and have experience using are the Derwent Intense blocks, which are like crayons. So what I want to do is I want to uh, show you uh, how these, the, the block, what it looks like when you draw with that and when you draw with a the pencil. Then I want to uh, show you what the problems that I see with these little tubes at times. How you can actually use the paint in the tube and create it into a half pan and then to finish off by showing you how uh, I mix certain colours and a little, just, just a little hack that I have, particularly in regard to black. First up, the Derwent Inktense Blocks. Now I'm gonna pluck out, I think, which is the Thalo Blue or Ultramarine, and I wanna show you. So if I was, uh, say I was drawing just something simple as a house, and I'm gonna give it uh, trees. <laughs> These are very, very basic, and windows. I'm just gonna do different strengths of line and there you are, just a very, very simple scribble with it. Then the magic comes whenever I get some water. This is my little water pot. It's one of those Faber-Castell collapsible water pots with a sea white of Brighton 18 inch, uh, or not 18 inch, size 18 flat brush. Then I just get a generous amount of water. And the minute that I drop it on, the pigment is released. And I can play about quite nicely with that. So, and I also facilitate the flick that I love. So that is the Derwent Inktense block. Next up is the going for bright blue in the Derwent Inktense watercolor pencil. Now, let me draw something similar again. So we're gonna just, I've never been great at drawing from my imagination, but I've seen enough houses. And we're gonna give this one just some, Nice little trees around here, and then maybe there's a path going up. Let's get that one, and then we're going to here, and then we're going to give some definition to those. Let me see those lines. It's going to be darker a wee bit in there. There's going to be some bushes around the house here. There we are. So very simple drawing, treated exactly like a pencil. I don't wet the tip of the pencil. I draw on the page, and then I use the brush just lifting the water on 
And again, look at the explosion of the pigment on the page. I, I have never seen anything quite like it and just think it's absolutely fantastic. And again, there's loads of pigment and it facilitates the, the flick that I absolutely love. So that is the Derwent Inktense Watercolor Pencils. Okay, next up is the watercolor tube. This is Sea White of Brighton watercolor in a tube and it's obviously wet, it's not dry like a half pan. So I want to just highlight some of the problems that I have found with watercolor in a tube. Now, it's a very cost-effective way of buying paint, but there, it, I think from my point of view and what I've discovered is there is a way to use it to refill your half pans because, but I want to show you first the the potential hazards, I guess, that I can see with it. So I take some of it and just squeeze it out onto the palette. Now, the problem is with this uh, type of watercolor, because it is wet, what can happen is you you stick your brush in with a little bit of water and you end up with this really, really thick and almost you can end up lifting it practically neat and it ends up acting pretty much like an acrylic. Also for my water, it will very, very quickly turn my water into a whole pot of watercolor and it's going to affect every other color that it mixes with. The consistency that I'm really looking for, I would tend to do three lifts just to get enough water in. And then I, if I was using wet and that's all I had, I would just take a little bit and begin to mix it in. So the other thing is I have to quite, really quite intentionally and vigorously move it around so that I'm not going to get undiluted paint um, onto the brush and then it's gonna affect the air and paint. And so that's probably closer to consistency. Now I want it a little bit richer than that. So, and I go again dipping with the corner of the flat edge brush. And just that then allows me, that's more the consistency of watercolor that I'm looking for. So the flaws with buying it in a tube and putting it straight out is it is much harder to avoid it becoming more like an acrylic. But there is a way that I uh, have discovered of just putting them into the half pans and letting them dry that really, really works. And it means then that you can use them in a way that is much more conducive to effective uh, watercolor paint. So this is a little plastic half pan, which you can buy if you uh, stick it into Amazon or in any art shops. They're very inexpensive. And all you do is you take your watercolor in the tube and you squeeze it in and I nearly dropped the lid and all you need to do then is leave that for several days now I would probably leave that uh, between I would say four days in a week until it becomes absolutely cured and then in true blue Peter fashion here's one that has I poured um, or squeezed into the little half pan many many months ago and you can buy little containers for this this is a little container of half pans. A kind friend gave that to me and it has the half pans in it and then they're cured. It's just a nice little travel set. And it's a very cost effective way of buying paints. So once that is now cured and dry, it means that I can just agitate it as normal. And then pretty much instantly I have watercolor at a consistency that I'm gonna uh, be happy to use whichever times I'm using it at. So here I am now with my uh, favorite set of watercolor paints, which are the Daniel Smith half pans. Daniel Smith paint behaves in a way that is just uh, wonderful and very unique. And I, I just really enjoy using them. And the sun has just started shining, isn't that wonderful? So what I tend to do is, depending on the size of the brush and the amount that I need, I'll do normally two or three lifts of water simply from the clean water into the palette. So I said to you that I would give you just a little mixing hack for doing black. So this is Jane's Grey or Payne's Grey um, and it is a quite a cool and bluey. Now that's a little bit, I want to add in a little bit more pigment there from the half pan. And it is a lovely cool tone and it is my favourite um, paint to use is the James Gray. Now, when I'm using it, I would often use James Gray or Payne's Gray, let's just call it Payne's Gray, for uh, the likes of pavement or tarmac, because I would do a lot of towns and you know buildings and architecture and things like that. Now, if I want to bring that into a more earthy color, 
I'm going to take some of the burnt umber, again, just wetting the brush slightly, taking a little bit of the burnt umber and mixing it in. And what that'll do is that will make it a much more earthy black, more like an ivory black, black or a lamp black. Now, if I'm then wanting to go back to uh, this more Jane's Grey or Payne's Grey, then I can take an ultramarine blue, mix it in, and it will take me straight back then to the Payne's Grey. And if I'm also wanting to do some sort of stonework, so I'm going to mix it back to that more earthy black. And then I'm going to take some cerulean blue. Just a little bit, just a little touch. And mixing is always a pendulum swing backwards and forwards trying to find it. Now that's a little bit too blue. So I'm going to take a little bit of that, that um, burnt umber again. And maybe just another touch of the cerulean. And it's going to give me a different tone again, which just I find works really, really well for like dry stone walls or if you're in Aberdeen and the kind of granite that they use there or stone there. So there is a very, very simple little hack for using effectively the colors that you have on the palette. If you can see there, I turned over the page that I was using in the last little bit of demo because I don't want to waste it. I don't want to waste the color. These are expensive watercolors. So just just those little hacks is something that I would use really very regularly. If you would like to see more um, videos about mixing color, then just leave a message in the comments. So I hope that you find this video beneficial. Just to simply show you the different ways that you can purchase watercolour, the advantages and the disadvantages that I have personally found. You may be someone who absolutely prefers buying it from the tube and using it wet. But I just wanted to show you the different ways that I've discovered and hopefully you'll find some benefit in that. As I said in the last section there, if you would like to see more hacks and uh, ways of mixing colours and just ways that I've discovered of using it, then please just drop that into the comments. If you're enjoying these videos, then please like and subscribe. And again, please just uh, give me suggestions of things that you would like to see. I hope that these videos give you a little bit of encouragement give you permission to just jump into this wonderful media of watercolour. I, it's something that I've enjoyed using for most of my life and I hope that you find the same. So thank you for watching this video and we'll see you soon.